Hello everybody. In this lecture, I'll be showing you how to add the password reset functionality to the login system that we've been developing in this course. First, I'm going to show you the finished product, then I'll walk you through the code line by line. So this is our home page. We have the login link here. So when a user click on this login link, we provide them an option to reset the password. So when they click on the forgot password link, the system displays a new form. So in this form, the user is required to provide their email address, which is the email that they use to register. Then they have to enter a new password and then confirm the password. So basically what we'll be doing here is first of all, we need to check if the email address entered by the user here is a correct email address. Uh, that is if the email is registered in our system. So if the email is registered, then we need to check the new password and the confirmed password to ensure that both password matches. So I'll just quickly show you a demo so that we see uh, how this works out. So now I click on the password reset and then we see there, there were three errors in the form. New password is a required feed. Confirmed password is a required feed. Email is not a valid email address. So let's say I'm going to put a valid email address, demo4 at example.com. So I also put a valid password, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So when I click on reset password, so it's going to say the email address provided does not exist in our database. Please try again. So this means that the, this user has not been registered in the system. In order for you to be able to use this form to reset the password, your email must already be existing in the database. So now let me quickly walk you through the code so that you'll see how this plays out. So this is the HTML part. We have the title, password reset page. We have the H2 here. Then we have the H3 here. So we have the PHP part that displays the results and also the other part that displays the error messages. So now I have the form here. I have the feed for email and I've named this email. We have the feed for new password and I've named this new password. I have the feed for confirmed password and I've named this confirmed password. And we have the submit button here and I've named this password reset btn just for convention sake. And the value is reset password, which is exactly the form that we saw here, this form. Okay, now let me walk you through the code line by line. As before, we have our include file here for our database connection script. We have the include for the utilities, which contains the functions that we're using to validate our forms. And here I'm checking to see if the password reset button is clicked. So if that button is clicked, we want to initialize our form error arrays Next, we want to check for the required feeds. So in this case, we are checking for email. Email is required, new password is required, and confirm password is also a required feed. We pass in the required feeds to our check empty feed functions, then match the results to our form errors arrays here. Then we store it again here. Next, we want to check to see that the length of the password is not less than six. So we check it, new password length, six is the minimum. Confirm password, six is also the minimum. So when we define it here, we pass it to this function that checks for minimal length. The result which is returned from this function, we merge it to the form error arrays and store it also in the form errors arrays. Next, we are checking to see if the email entered is a valid email address. If it is not a valid email address, no need to uh, continue processing the form. We simply just store the error here also and uh, display it to the user. So next, we're going to check if the form error arrays is empty. So if the form error array is empty, which means there was no error in the form. So we can go ahead to collect the form data and store them in variables. Here we collect the user's email, store it in the email variable, collect what the user entered in the new password feed and store it in password one variable. We collect what was entered in the confirmed password feed and store it as password two. Next, we are going to check here. If password one, which is stored here, 
is not equal to password 2, which means that what the user entered here, let's say the user entered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, and here enters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which means uh, this 2 doesn't match. So that's what we're checking here, actually. We're checking if password 1 is not equal to password 2. If that is true, then we are going to display this error message, which says new password and confirm password does not match. Otherwise, if that is false, if the result of this evaluation is false, we are going to try to query the database in order to check if the email address entered by the user is actually a valid email address existing in our database. So here we create our SQL statement, select email from users where email, then we use a placeholder here to supply the user's email address. Next, we are going to use a PDO to sanitize our SQL statement. Call this statement equals DB prepare the SQL query. All this we have explained in our previous uh, lectures. So you should be familiar with all this now. So next we're going to execute the query using the email address, which was actually collected here. So remember, this is the post, which is the value entered by the user. So we stored it here. Now we're going to pass it in as a parameter to use when querying the database. So next we're going to check if the record exists. So we call our statement. Then we use the row can function to see if there is one row return, which means actually uh, the email address exists in the database. So if that's the case, we want to quickly ask our password. Next, we are going to create our SQL query to update the uh, user's password in the database. So I call this SQL update equals update user set password equals, then we're using place order to supply the value where the email address is going to be equal to the email address which we just verified here. So next we prepare the statement using PDO and we actually execute the statement. Now we're going to pass in the password which was hashed. So once we execute this query, then we are going to display the message password reset success. So actually I make this successful password reset successful. So if at the time that we query the database here, we actually query the database here to check if this email address exists. If this email address was not existing in the database, then we are going to actually call the S part of this. Remember here, we are checking if there's one row returned when we executed this query. When this query that we created here was executed here, then we are checking with this if statement to see if there was one row returned from the database. So if there was no row returned, then we are going to call the S part. And what this does is simply to display the email address provided does not exist in our database. Please try again. And finally, we're just checking here to see if there were errors in our form errors arrays. If there were errors, then we undo it here as we've done in our previous lecture. So this is basically the uh, all the codes that we need for password reset functionality. So let's go over to the browser and demonstrate to see how this works out. So come here, we have registered a user previously and the account was demo. We have demo at example.com, I think. So we're going to create a new password and call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to make this four, then click on reset. So we say confirm password is too short, must be six characters long. So let's go again with demo at example.com. We give the correct password this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when I click on password reset, everything should work fine if this email exists. So here it tells us password reset successful. So that is basically all. If we were to go back and try this, can log in, demo, then we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then click on sign in. We should be able to log in. You are now logged in as demo logout.